Welcome back Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. This is the second in a series of screencasts to teach you how to use the smart board and the notebook software that comes along with the smart board. In this lesson you're going to learn more about pages, text, and graphics in the notebook software. In fact you're looking at the first page of a notebook software document. The second page which I can get to by just coming over to my page list and clicking on number two is the horse activity that we did last time in the screencast. I can go back to the first page by clicking here. You learned in the last lesson that you can type text and certainly all I did to type this text was I clicked on the text tool and then clicked and started typing. I just typed lesson number two and so forth. And remember we also learned about erasing. That if I want to get rid of that text box uh, the eraser won't work. If you want to get rid of a text box, number one, grab the arrow tool. You'll have to get in the habit of always going to the arrow tool when you want to do something with an object. So the arrow tool, click, and then just hit the delete key on your keyboard or come down here and delete either way and I will have deleted that un unnecessary text. Let's go back and talk about the horse activity we did last time. This is where we had an activity where students would come to the board grab with their finger the horse and slide across the bar counting as they go. So one, two, three, four horses and so forth. But what you might notice is that if they accidentally grab the bar uh, it can move too and that's not a good thing. We don't want that bar to move. So what I'm going to learn first in today's lesson is to click on this bar come to the drop down menu and say lock in place lock in place now that bar can't be moved I might want to lock my heading come up to the drop down choose locking lock in place now we don't want to lock the horses in place because we do want them to be able to be moved across from one side to the other but now we've learned that you can lock images or text Anything that's in, a, in the form of a text box or an image can be locked in place and there's plenty of times where we want that uh, to happen. The next thing you might think about is that since we're going to have one student come up and do this, we might want to have another student come up and do it, only we don't want to give him the exact same problem. So what if we cloned this entire page? Now to do that, I'm going to go to the page menu, to the drop down, and say clone the page. And when I do, now I get two identical pages. Now since I don't want the second page exactly identical to the first page, how about if I click on a horse, hit my delete key on my keyboard, or the drop down either way, and get rid of the X. Another way you can delete an item, if I want to get rid of one of the cats, for example, I click on the cat, let's go up here to the X, and that will get rid of it. So let's get rid of a few of the horses. Uh, I might want to add a couple rabbits so I could just click here come to my drop down and clone and then we've got another rabbit so you can clone to get more of something delete to get fewer and now we've got a little different set of horses to count than we had on the previous one we cloned the page and made some changes to it I could even clone this page one more time come down to clone page and on this example I might take out the word horses oops I can't take it out because we've locked it in place remember so if I click on the lock menu and unlock now I can change the word horses to rabbits how many rabbits are there again I might want to lock it back in place now so it won't get accidentally moved so now we have an activity how many horses how many horses with a different number of horses how many rabbits if I wanted the rabbit example to go between the two horses, all I have to do is to grab this page with my mouse and pull it right up here. And now the, the sequence is horses, rabbits, horses. So you can shuffle your pages around by just dragging them back and forth. Next, we're going to go on to an activity where we want students not to just drag and count items we want them to be able to create these drawings so here I've I've got a, a an assignment where I want to have my students come up 
and I want the first student to draw five O's, the second one to draw seven C's, and so forth. Of course, primary age children are learning the alphabet, and so they're also learning to count, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone here. We're going to practice writing letters of the alphabet and also counting them as we go. Now, the first thing I notice about this is that the text is really too close together. There's not enough room here for small hands to write uh, these letters. So what we could do is remember you, if you click on the box, you can make it larger by pulling the icon in that bottom right hand corner down. So I've got it larger, but there's still not a whole lot of space. What I'm going to do now is to look at this icon right here, which is the properties of this box. If I click on the properties box, I can certainly change the color of the text. I could change it to red if I wanted to, or to blue. I could certainly boldface or, what, or underline whatever I want to do there. But it's the line spacing that I want to change. What about if we change the line spacing to 2.0? Notice how that gives us more room now for the children to come up and write what we want them to write. The next thing is I don't want the second student who will be coming up to see exactly what problem he's going to have. I want only the five O's to be shown, then the seven C's and so forth. And to do that we're going to learn to use what's called the window shade. So I click on the window shade icon up here on my toolbar. The window shade gives you the opportunity to pull the shade down to reveal as much as you want to or you can also pull it from right to left and left to right and so forth. But now this is the way I'll leave this page so that only the first student will come up and do five O's. Once he is done, I'll pull the window shade down for the second student to do seven C's and so forth. Now we might want to clone this page. So if I go to my clone page icon and clone the page, on the, the second page, the, the cloned page, what I might want to do is to change some of these numbers. Instead of 5, why don't we make it 4 instead of an O? How about if we make that uh, the letter L and so forth? And we could change all of these any way we wanted to. So in this screencast, you've learned how to use some text tool options by highlighting the text, clicking on the option tool, You've also learned how to use window shade, which we can pull up and show as much as we want to. And you've learned some features of using the page options where we can clone a page and lock items in place on the page. On the next screencast, you're going to learn a lot more features of the graphics gallery. That is the gallery where all of the images are housed. See you then.